And my name is Tom Skarlinski. I'm a USDA identifier in the Port of Miami. I also specialize in identifying Thysanoptera. Today I'm going to talk about gender recognition and thrips, or basically how do we tell the difference between the boys and the girls. Well basically in the, in the Terebrantia, you want to look at their ovipositor. And the ovipositor in the females, they're going to have serrate areas, and I'll show you right there. See those little serrations right there? On the ovipositor, that's going to tell you they're terebrantia. Um, there are some exceptions, plesiothrips, aurorothrips, and, ch and, and chirothrips or chirothrips. Uh, they don't necessarily have that, but most of the time you're going to run into the, um, ovi the females with this type of ovipositor that's serrated. Now the males obviously don't have an ovipositor. They have an ediagus, and that's in this area right here. And you're going to notice as well, I, one thing that I do is I notice that a lot of times the males, they tend to be a little bit smaller uh, in the terebrantia. And they also, um, they have, they're kind of recurved backwards when you see them uh, in, in vitro and alcohol. Also, the males tend, in the terebrantia, they'll, they'll have uh, these little glandular areas on the sternites. They may not have every sternite with a glandular area. There may only be a couple, but they oftentimes will have a, a, a glandular area on the sternites. Now in the, uh, the tubulifera, the uh, females or the girls, you're going to tell those by this little sclerotized area right here. And that's actually the, and the, the it, it, some, some texts call it a fustus, others that it's this irreversible shoot-like area for um, depositing the eggs on the surface of the leaves where that ovipositor will come out. Now on the males, you have the ediagus again for our boys, it's here. And you also notice on the sides here, there's these um, areas so that, that separate the sclerite so this whole area will open up. Um, like I say, or I didn't say actually, the what you're going to want to know, the difference between the males and the females. The keys are, are designed either for identification of a female. And so you really want to make sure that you've got the right gender before you start in on your keys. Uh, the collaborators include the following. Any questions? Most keys are designed for female specimen. What do I use if I got a male specimen? That's a great question. Actually, most keys are designed for the females, but the keto taxi is very similar oftentimes in the females, and you can transfer that using a, those same characters to identify males. Um, furthermore, if you really want to figure it out, you can go to the original descriptions, and they often describe the male specimens of that particular species. If I don't have an adult thrips, can I use an immature to key it out? There's another great question. Actually, the answer is yes and no. Yes, you can identify it maybe to genus, but species oftentimes is difficult. There's not a lot of literature, not, there hasn't been a lot of study in the immatures. So depending on the region of the world where you've gotten that, uh, that immature, there may or may not be literature that will help you out in that case.